Hello everyone, thank you for having me tonight. We're excited to be here to talk with you, um, as you can tell, about hobbiting through life. Yes, I have made the word hobbit into a verb, and it's about how I've gone from a person seeking shelter constantly to someone who's willing to face the storm. I hope you enjoy it. Do you ever wonder what made building wagons so special? I apologize in advance to those of you not familiar with Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, because I'm about to enter Nirvana, so try and hang with me. Let me break it down for you. Bilbo Baggins is the Hobbit. Hobbits value certain things in life. Specifically, they value consistency, safety, the status quo, no changes. It's time to wake up, eat, repeat, sleep, eat, repeat. Hobbits take no risks. Bilbo, however, is different. Bilbo is willing to go on an adventure with the dwarves to help them regain their homeland from a dragon. If this serves as a spoiler alert for you, I do not apologize. Turn on the TV or crack a book. Anyway, hang with me. Bilbo returns from his journey with the all-powerful magical ring, and many years later, his adopted cousin Frodo inherits that ring and is charged with destroying it for all that is good in the world. It takes its toll on Frodo. We see happy, innocent little Frodo of the Shire with his white face and his perfectly curly hair and his little furry hobbit feet, happy every day to be in the Shire, his safe space. We then see Frodo of Mordor. After the ring has taken its toll on him, we can see he's exhausted, he's struggled, He's really working here to continue moving forward each day. He's a different hobbit. For those of you who do not know, I'm severely obsessive compulsive. I promise you this is going to connect. Just stay with me. Obsessive compulsive disorder is generally thought of as being constant washing of hands, fears of germs, afraid of cracks, constantly doing things, maybe tapping, clicking, and counting. For example, consider this clip from the movie as good as it gets. I lived in the Shire, or the library. 
I only make perfect little choices, and I plan everything to perfection. If I couldn't control what was going on in my brain, I would control everything else in my life. The reality was, I was paralyzed. It kept me from any adventures at all. So now you're asking, how did you go from Bill of Baggins of the Shire to Bill of Baggins Dragon Slayer? And the answer is I didn't. I think I'm more like Frodo. I inherited the ring or the burden that is OCD, and I lived with it courageously. If you've ever seen The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, you know that when Frodo puts on the ring, it provides this temporary or of relief because the ring is so exhausting. Just like obsession, they're so exhausting. You put on that ring at the cost of making the enemy closer to you. In my mind, this is the way OCD works. You have an irrational fear. It could be like in the movie, it could be germs. So you put on that ring, you wash your hands a hundred times a day. And when you take it off, guess what? It's still there and it comes back with a thing. Now I don't want you to feel bad for Frodo. That's not the point of this. Because remember, Frodo too went on an adventure. Before I get into how seeking treatment for OCD really changed my life, I want to make three very important points. Three things that I hope you will leave here today and take forward some way in your life. The first one is I will not be silent. After suffering for 24 years with OCD, I promised myself, I made a promise that in there, I would scream from the billboards, I would talk to anyone who listened, I would write a book, I would tell a story, I would be on this stage here tonight, whatever it took for other people to know the process of healing and that needlessly suffering is not necessary. If it does get better, then it can be better. So here I am today at 40 years old imploring you, if you have OCD, if you have depression, if you have mental illness, if you have physical abuse, it doesn't have to be any of that. Maybe it's a sensation of feeling trapped by a person or a substance. It can't get better. There is support. You just have to be willing to take the first step. And please, if you're younger than 24, don't wait 24 years. If you're older, don't waste another day. Point number two is you are not alone. Frodo even tried to get rid of Sam Watts again. He tried to say, get away from me, Sam. Sam, I can do this a lot. And Sam would not leave him. We all feel like we're alone. We all feel like what's happening up here is ours. And there's something there that's not quite right or that's wrong or we shouldn't be thinking this or we shouldn't be feeling this. And I'm here to tell you that's not true. It's part of the human experience. Okay? You are not alone. Even in this room right now, I can promise you, there are people beside you or near you thinking, maybe it's time I change something. And there are people beside you or with you thinking, maybe it's time that I help that person that needs it. You are not alone out there. And I give you a little anecdote. At 24, I remember picking up my phone and calling my dad and saying, Dad, I need help. He had no idea I had OCD. I wasn't a hand washer. I wasn't visibly performing things. And I said, Dad, I need help. And he drove and he got me. He took me to the doctor. We began this process of healing that took years that I'll talk about in a minute. But I remember the closest person in my life was my grandfather. Love of my life. Christian could do no wrong. And the biggest fear was telling that this man, who was traditional, who there's no black and white life, that I was struggling with this thing, because he idolized me in the world I lived in. And I remember walking in and saying to him, Grandpa, I've got a problem. I have OCD and I need some help. And I remember he wrapped his arms around me and he said, I've known for a long time, baby. You are not alone. There is that person there that can help you and it will support you. Number three might be near and dearest to my heart. Because if you remember from the clip from the movie As Good As It Gets, we typically think of these hand washing and germs as what OCD is. And the reality is so much more than that. Those weren't my obsessions. Those weren't my compulsions. So I couldn't be OCD, right? There had to be something else wrong with me. And the reality is that everybody, 
And this is one of the first things you learn when you do get to court. Everybody has the same radical, crazy thoughts. Good, bad, all over the place. Because we're human. We all have that thought. The average brain goes, that was really stupid. <laughs> the OCD brain says, what if? Oh, but then what if? Oh, but then what if? And before you know it, you've created an entire line of all of these fears, all of these things that you're trying to get rid of, and you become completely consumed. We all experience the same thing because we're all alive. I want to bring this up because we tend to notice contamination, perfectionism, are things that people think about when they think of OCD, right? I'm afraid I'm going to get sick, so I do this over and over and over again. And we tend to see compulsions and performances people do, such as hand washing, checking up the work, did I need the stove on? I want to come here today and I just want to say there are other things that exist. And to understand OCD, you have to understand that sometimes these things are too taboo to talk about, they're too uncomfortable. They may be fear of offending God. I've done something, I've offended God, how will I ever be forgiven, so I'm going to be a compulsive prayer. It could be fear that I'm going to, that I hurt someone and didn't know it, and now there's someone out there hurt by me. Okay? These things are also common obsessions and compulsions. Once I realized I was OCD and put a label on it, I cannot tell you the amount of relief that came into my life. There were other people who experienced the same things, who had the same exact thoughts, who had the same exact issues and compulsions. I was relieved. And I came to detest that phrase, and it was so OCD. Okay? Not judging if you've used it, because I think we all have, so don't worry about it. But I ask you, before you ever use that phrase to talk to someone again, ask yourself, are these things normal? I can tell you right now, I would never reload the dishwasher after my dad. If it is not exactly in a certain way, I have done something terribly wrong in life, okay? We all like certain things certain ways, but you have to ask yourself the question, does this consume me? Is this a pattern? Is this a problem? And I ask you to have a key word that's in our graduate profile which is empathy and compassion to think about what it would feel like for someone to say that so lightly. And it may not be OCD. It may be depression. It may be abuse. It could be anything. But together, my call of action to this room tonight is that we help change the perception of these things because we all exist as part of this human experience. So, now you're asking, how did you go from the girl afraid to answer a telephone to standing on a stage in El Salvador? And the answer is, wasn't easy. It was really hard. Worth it, but really hard. It took a lot of support. It took me realizing I wasn't alone. It took me looking at my self-esteem and realizing I had things to offer or that I had value. It took more than anything me pausing to listen to my soul over my body. My body's telling me to panic and that something's wrong, but I knew in my heart that's not true. And the worst part, the hardest part, I've already mentioned this, for the first 24 years I sat suffering. Since then, I've been hobbiting around, hobbiting on my little adventures around the world. I moved to China alone with three suitcases and a pillow. Now, yeah, well, they kept you, right? There's human resources. Kind of. Um, I ate burritos and Gatorade for the first two weeks. I <laughs> like, didn't know what anything said, okay? But it was an adventure. I've traveled the world alone. I lived in Brazil. Dabbled in Portuguese, much better in Spanish. And as you can see here, your lovely stadium where I went, Proudly wearing an El Salvador shirt. I was not going to wear a U.S. jersey. Not crazy. No. Um, yes, thank you for the applause. Yes. Um, to the U.S. El Salvador day. Those are just some of my adventures. So if you'll allow me to wrap up by concluding with my metaphor, I want to say I'm not cured of OCD. 
I never will be. Just like Proto will never lose the ring, I will never lose OCD. However, I want to manage it with tools, support, and being willing to take that first step. Like Frodo, some days that ring is so heavy around my neck. And some days it feels like I can conquer the world. But in the end, Frodo and I are alike. It may be such a burden, but it's a heck of a journey. And without the journey, what's the purpose? Thank you.